Um, these two old friends meet after not seeing each other for a long time, and one of them looks absolutely forlorn, like, uh, it's just like, what has the world done to you, my old friend? Says, well, three, three weeks ago, my cousin died. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And he left me $40,000. That's a lot of money. He says, I know, but two weeks ago, my uncle died. Really? And he left me $80,000. Okay. And then last week, I know this is weird, a great aunt died. Oh my gosh, he says, she left me nearly a quarter of a million dollars. And he says, I, I don't really get what the, what the problem is. He says, this week, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Vera. <laughs> I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. We had the greatest meal here the other day. That was so wonderful. Anyway, yeah, thank you for, for that. Thanksgiving is a, is a great time to kind of consider what you're grateful for. And I know we all can do that, and it's a wonderful thing. And at the meal, everybody just sort of passed around a microphone, and people said what they were grateful for. But um, I, I want to make a case that gratitude is pretty simple. It just means we feel thankful. You know, we, we accept what we have, and we're grateful for it, and we notice it. And so my, my point is going to be gratitude is gratitude is gratitude. Because there's a way that, um, let's just try this as an experiment. Turn to the person next to you and just go back and forth a couple times and say what you're grateful for. Watch what happens. The three of you could get together. It's all right. You can do a threesome. It's fine. Okay, so let me have your attention now. First of all, this is something you should notice. How do you feel? Right, it, it, expressing and feeling and noticing what you're thankful for makes you happy, which is a, in and of itself is a kind of a wonderful thing. I just wanted to say that sometimes, as we grow up, we're taught what socially acceptable gratitude looks like. Think of what you said back and forth. You know, you go to bed at night, we thank God for our health, our family, our home, around the table. We thank, you know, thankful that we have food to eat. We see somebody less fortunate than us, where we're thankful that we have what we have. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's wonderful to be grateful for those things, and maybe that's what you did then, okay? But I, over time, you can realize that Sometimes, if you don't think your gratitude is good enough, like how many, did you ever notice that you could be grateful for something very superficial? And that sort of doesn't cut it. That's not like politically correct <laughs> to just like, I remember, uh, do you remember the show um, Peter Pan years ago? Anyway, it was this wonderful Broadway play. And at a certain point, Peter Pan was gonna teach the little children in the nursery how to fly. And it was Wendy and Michael and John. And Wendy and John sort of caught on fast. They said, all you have to do is think wonderful thoughts. Think wonderful thoughts. And they, you know, and they would say these little things, you know, and then, but Michael couldn't seem to fly because his wonderful thought was candy, candy. He kept saying candy, and he wouldn't get off the ground. See what I mean? That's the socially acceptable, that's not, he finally said Christmas, and then he got up. 
but that always stuck with me. What was wrong with candy? Um, <laughs> you see, I think gratitude is gratitude, and whatever you feel grateful for is a wonderful thing. So don't have it be so high and mighty only. I mean, the high and mighty things are wonderful too, but to be grateful for anything that makes you happy. I know this is stupid, but for 15 years, I've been putting up with a shower door that is, something's wrong with it. You just, you know, these kind of, and it just doesn't flow. And finally, it dawned on me, like, there's a mechanism here. Why don't I, so I took it apart, and there was like these two little wheels that were totally destroyed. So I, I went on eBay, and I found these, these two little wheels with ball bearings in them, and I put them in. And I tell you, every morning I take a shower, I go, <laughs> I am so grateful. I know it's weird, but... <laughs> so you don't want to do, you know, if you put rules and regulations on how and why you should feel grateful, then you, you could have this attitude be associated with guilt, and you don't want that. You want to be grateful for it anything at any time that you have or that you like. So could you do the same exercise, but do some superficial stuff? <laughs> Say what you like that's not really significant, but it makes a difference to you. What are you grateful for? That's our little things. Online shopping is fine. Chocolate chip cookies are fine, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. So what was your experience? Did it still feel good? Yes, it's nice. And anything you can do to keep that, that feeling up, even if it's the, the smallest thing, a cup of coffee, anything that you really like, that you look forward to, is a wonderful thing, and it, and it, it changes you. We're going to talk about all the, all the different benefits of, of gratitude. What I wanted to talk about is how do you make gratitude part of who you are, as opposed to these bursts of gratitude that you feel sometimes, when you see something horrible like the poor fires in, in California, and you just see how amazing it is that you have a home that hasn't burned down or stuff like that. Yes, that's very understandable. And it's a wonderful thing to feel this as just who you are, who you're being. It takes practice. You can't just do it once. If you practice it, though, this is the amazing thing about being human. We can practice this stuff. We can actually get better at it and you can have your eyes open for what you like and what you're grateful for. And if you've ever tried this exercise of counting your blessings, uh, there's more and more to count the more you count. It just keeps, the list keeps getting longer because you're putting your concentration, whatever you focus on will increase. I thought this was really honest. This woman, I, I, wrote, I read a lot of blog posts that people wrote about gratitude online. And this woman was, she said, you know, I don't have trouble with gratitude when things are going well. <laughs> and, uh, and, or I, I compare myself to someone who's had a tragedy. Gratitude comes easy. Here's when it's hard. I'm grateful for what I have until I see someone with more. <laughs> I thought, hmm. She said, listen to this. She says, I'm grateful for the food on my table because I know others are starving but I wish we had the money to be able to eat out more. I swear, everyone I know has tried that new restaurant already. <laughs> I'm grateful for my healthy and functional body because I know so many are sick or disabled, but I would love to look like that woman at the gym who has amazing abs and perfect hair. I'm grateful for my family and my loving friends. But that group of ladies on Facebook sure seem to have a way more exciting social life than I do. See how it makes it harder to be grateful when you think someone is doing better than you. So the interesting thing, though, is if you practice gratitude, and they've done a lot, they've done over 40 different experiments on people who are willing to do these things called um, gratitude journals. 
five minutes at night, you write in a journal what you're grateful for. Amazing, amazing changes in their life just from doing that for 90 days. If you did 90 days of that, it would actually become more of a habit. So this is the real work. It, it, has, it has something to do not just with gratitude, but with contentment. Contentment is actually what allows gratitude to be kind of who you're being instead of just like a burst of it. So you want to be grateful for what you have in spite of what you don't have. When you think about contentment, it has to do with not needing more to be happy. That joke was about <laughs> needing more to be happy. It wasn't enough, you see, that he got what he got, but he hasn't gotten anything recently. How many times have you looked forward to something and finally gotten it, and it was fun, you know, for a while, and then it, it fades? There's a thing called um, hedonistic adaptation, which happens to all human beings, which is why we've made progress since we've been on the planet. If you didn't have hedonistic adaptation, everybody would just be kind of content with what they had, and we'd just do nothing. Why change? Here we are. But because we always want more, and we, we want this, we want that, and we have goals, and we shoot for things, and why does that happen? This thing called hedonistic adaptation, which means that the thing that gives you pleasure loses its effect to give you pleasure over time. And if you take it to its extreme, that's where addiction comes in. Someone once described taking heroin for the first time as climbing back into the womb. And then every time since, they've been trying to get back there, and they can't. It doesn't quite do. You need more. You need more. You need more. And so that feeling of <clears throat> adapting to whatever the stimulus is makes you more and more materialistic. Is there anyone here who really likes the idea of Amazon two-day shipping? Besides me. <laughs> it can get very... <laughs> but I had a thing recently where they said it was going to arrive in two days, and it didn't get here till like three or four. And I called them up, and I was like, what is with this? And I thought, oh my God. <laughs> when you're content, it's not about wanting, wanting more. It's just not needing more. It's a very big distinction. You can certainly want more than what you have. Why not? You can certainly have goals. You can certainly want to get to where you want to get to. But when it gets wrapped up with how you feel because you think you need that to be happy, then you can't feel gratitude. It takes that away. So it's a wonderful thing to want more and at the same time to be content, to be grateful for what you have. Here's what contentment isn't. It's not complacency. You don't stop trying to make things better. When you're content, you just don't need things to be better, to be happy. But you're still willing to strive to be better. I don't have to improve. I'm taking on this project recently. Uh, I like to, you know, I, I, you probably noticed before the service, I'm playing kind of standard songs. Well, I decided to learn these songs um, and memorize them. So I've, this is like the Great American Songbook. So I've memorized now 265 different arrangements of these songs. And I am content with what I've done, but I'm also very much wanting to learn more songs, and I'm getting into it deeper, and I just want to practice all the time. And I never wanted to practice. I was a terrible piano student in third grade. My parents just finally gave up and quit on me because I wouldn't practice. But now you can't stop me. So I want to get better, and I want to know these songs inside and out, and I really want to have them deeply in me. And I love playing them. I'm playing for senior centers. People love this stuff. And I don't need to learn any more. 265 is plenty. It's a lot of songs. That covers the 30s, 40s, 50s, some of the 60s. But I want to. I just like it. And I want to get better and better at it. I want to be more and more comfortable. I want to use actually less of my memory and more of just feeling it. 
You see what I'm saying? So it's, all these things are existing at the same time. I'm very grateful for this opportunity. It's just given me something to shoot for. So I definitely want to get better at the piano, but I'm content. See how that works? You can be content with what you have, and it doesn't mean you'll be complacent, not to worry. It also doesn't mean settling. When you're content, it doesn't mean you settle less than what you should have or could have. You don't lower your expectations. It just means that you don't allow stuff that is lower than your expectations to make you unhappy. I'm working with this company right now, um, and the owners are brothers. And I want them to get along. <laughs> Uh, there's some tension there, and that's probably why I was brought in. And they're very good. I mean, there's a lot of competition, stuff like this. And sometimes I hear somebody say something that's very below my expectations, like, man, there's a non-starter. <laughs> you say something and everything goes, Meh. And yet, I'm in the presence when I'm with them of how grateful I am to even be in this game that I can even input with these brothers, and it's not my expectation, but I just, instead of being upset that I didn't, because I could take that personally, like, boy, how did that meeting go that way? I must not have been a very good coach in there, but I don't feel that way. It just makes me feel curious, like, isn't that interesting? We were going, okay, and then we went off a cliff, and the wheels came off the bus. Huh, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> but it, you see what I mean? It doesn't necessarily have to knock you back personally. It just makes it interesting. It's curious. So the other thing that being content doesn't do is it doesn't take away your ambition. If you want to be an astronaut, if you want to be a public speaker, if you want to be a published author, if you want to be an artist, if you want to make a billion dollars, Go for it. Just don't have your happiness attached to that. There is not better than here. Then is not better than now. This is where it's happening. And I think it's so amazing because, let me tell you some of these things that they've studied. This is not just airy-fairy stuff. They've really studied this. These are some benefits that you get from being grateful. First of all, gratitude opens the door to new relationships. If you're grateful, if you thank somebody, even after a meeting in business, if you just thank them for being there, for calling you back as quickly as they did, for answering your email, all of that stuff, it enhances relationship. It improves your physical health. People who are grateful take better care of themselves. If they're grateful for their body, they take better care of it. It enhances empathy and reduces aggression. It, you become less competitive and less comparing. You know, somebody once told me this. They said, here's the problem with comparing yourself to other people. There's only two alternatives. I said, really, what's that? They said, you're either smug or insecure. <laughs> they both suck. <laughs> you think you're better than somebody or you think you're worse? Grateful people sleep better. People who journal before retiring sleep better and sleep longer. It increases your self-esteem because it does reduce these social comparisons. There's less likely to be you comparing yourself to someone else. It also increases your mental strength. People who are grateful found were more resilient after 9-11 than the ones who weren't. Vets who come back from the war who experience gratitude have less PTSD than those who don't. And we said it reduces materialism. You go against that hedonic adaptation. It also makes you less self-centered. You focus out on what's being done for you and how amazing it is that people are helping you and that you have so much support, it has you less likely to keep focusing on yourself. It also increases spirituality. Every major religion considers this a virtue. 
And when you see people who are ungrateful, it's very, very hard to take. The notion of being kind of a spoiled brat has to do with entitlement and no gratitude. No gratitude at all. Also, gratitude makes you more optimistic. I don't know why that is, but it just does. If you survey people, the ones who are grateful are optimistic that things are going to get better. Now, we did this exercise in the beginning, and you saw that you felt better doing it. Well, just because of the way the law of attraction works, if you feel good, you will generate and draw toward yourself circumstances that will correspond to that good feeling. That's just how it works. So the better you can feel and the more grateful you are, the more likely you will have circumstances that seem to fit that. You'll pull them right toward yourself just by being grateful. The last thing I wanted to tell you is this. I, um, can we put the slide up? I went to Albuquerque years ago. Uh, I had a very different experience that my kids did. We did a balloon ride. This is the Balloon Fest. It's the most photographed festival in the whole world. And we took a hot air balloon ride. Unfortunately, my children were too small to see over the basket. So they just <laughs> rolled around like dice in a cup. It was pretty horrible for them. <laughs> there, were, there were only three at the time. Um, but for me, I noticed that there was something weird about it because we take off. There's all these other balloons. It's fascinating. And when you're up about 25, 30 feet, I was very nervous. Like, man, we don't have any control of this thing. And we're, it looks like we're going towards this house. And then we're going to hit this tree. And, and then they keep putting the gas in, you know, and, and, and it goes higher and higher. Hit the next one, if you would. Here's what I found. After we got to about 100 feet, all of my anxiety went away. Things that were freaking me out and making me nervous and anxious were just interesting. It was like, ah, oh, cows, ah, oh, trees, they're all below me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just like, there was nothing to worry about. Before, I was sure we were going to slam into something. But once we got up at a certain level, so here's what I have found, and keep going through them, that this is one of the benefits that gratitude gives you. Go ahead. Altitude. <laughs> that actually it changes your perspective. You kind of rise above your problems and your issues and the things that you're nervous about and anxious about. And you're more like, huh, this all fits. My brother says this thing all the time. He says, when something horrible happens, he goes, this is actually good because, um, <laughs> and he may make something up. <laughs> this is actually good. You can do this. This is the thing. We have this mind that can do this. So. I just feel like if you're willing to practice, it really does become part of who you are, and it gets easier and easier and easier. It's one of the easiest things you can do. So let's, let's look at our, um, the last thing I want to say. Gratitude is part of who I am. Could you say that with me? Gratitude is part of who I am. <laughs>